What's going on guys? So a lot of people ask what's in my studio and not just on the music side, but also on the video side in terms of the whole production setup. So I've been pretty reluctant to do a video like this because it gets into be more about the gear and less about the musicianship and creativity. But the gear is part of the tool set that you need to be creative. So in this video, I'm going to show everything in my entire video and music setup for YouTube and production. So let's get into it. Really quickly guys, this video is sponsored by the people over at Serato and Serato Studio is an amazing DAW that lets you get to making beats with simply a laptop. You can download more sample packs on their website and make great sounding beats in as little as five minutes. Uh, Serato can be the ultimate DAW for making beats, so why not try it out for free? Anyways, thank you Serato for helping me continue to bring you guys free content. So for me, I'm gonna keep this about gear, but also about my personal philosophies about making the studio and why I did what I did. So the first thing most people notice and the thing that I love the most is actually this very large Lichtenstein picture on my wall. It's pretty freaking huge. And it's sort of bookended with my second favorite thing that I like to have around my spot, which is plant life, right? I love the colors that these plants have, right? Uh, next, I think the most important thing on the desk is the Tempest and my audio interface. So obviously, the Daysmith Instruments Tempest has been in my arsenal for, I guess, at least six years at this point. And the second most important thing I feel like I have is my Audion ID14, which is sort of the input for all my audio gear. And we'll get into the thing that feeds the ID14 via ADAT in a second. It's in the rack. So also on my desk, I obviously have this monitor, which is from Philips. It wasn't super expensive, but it's like a 10-bit monitor and I'm really into color grading and whatnot for my videos. And it's also big enough for production work. And then I also have my speakers, which I totally love. These are two of the speakers from IK Multimedia. I believe these are the iLouds. Uh, these are really good because they really give a good accurate bass representation when you play them, even though they have a very small footprint. So I also have the 990s from Bayer Dynamic, and I really like these, though sometimes they can be a bit harsh. Um, they're super open back headphones, so it's really good for space and getting some details. Also, I of course have my Lexar, which is like a dock for uh, CFast 2.0 cards and SD cards and a couple of USB slots. I honestly, I honestly really like this. This is uh, something I got off of Amazon that you can't really find uh, a lot of the parts anymore, so I'm glad that I actually have a full setup. And also, of course, the big thing is my modular. I keep the modular here on the desk so it's easy to reach, even though I don't use it probably as much as most people would think uh, someone with a large modular setup like this would use it, but it's still a great quote conversation piece. So I'm not facing this all the time, but around my back, technically, when I'm facing my computer, are all of the other synthesizers that I use on a normal basis. So that includes my Sequential Prophet 6, of course, everyone knows this, I use this all the time, as well as my Moog Sub 37, which I use for basses mostly, but also some leads. It's sort of a piece that I really love uh, because of its sort of saturated sound that you can get out of it. And below that, obviously, I would say my favorite keyboard that I've ever used, and uh, as a keyboardist and a pianist, the feel of the keys is super important. So this is the Korg SV-1. There's an SV-2 out, but I don't have it. So Korg SV-1 for me. So hooked up to my Sub-37 is actually what I consider my pedal board, and it's pretty much fully done at this point. I have my Moger Fogers up top, the ring modulator, and the 12 stage phaser. I also have my favorite pedal company that's sort of, uh, I don't know why I love them, but I do. That is the uh, Way Huge Blue Hippo, which is a chorus pedal, and the Way Huge Superpuss, which is a delay pedal. I also have the Moog MF Boost. Uh, it's a mini Foger pedal. I really think the mini Foger line is really slept on, and I'm sad that they don't make these anymore, but it's amazing. Uh, behind that, I also have a bunch of like storage uh, little things that I keep all of my cords and stuff in. It's ridiculous because I have so many cords and other things at this point that it's kind of a pain to keep all these, but I obviously need them, so they're here. Uh, beside that, I have my Apple HomePod Mini, which I just got and it sounds amazing. And I have, of course, the quintessential light bulb and plant 
that I have in tons of videos. I love that sort of old school light bulb style. So I got to keep it here. It's, it's a Philips Hue bulb. So behind the desk, I actually have my Fender uh, Jaguar bass and also my Fender Telecaster. I love both of these and uh, they come out all the time. They're kind of in a precarious place, but I love that I can grab them at a moment's notice would lay out, to lay down some tracks, you know? So underneath my desk, I actually have two different setups. I will have my music computer and I have my video editing computer and they're separate. One is a Mac and one is a PC. So under my desk, I have a super old 5K iMac and this iMac I've had forever. Um, it actually, I got it from a pawn shop for like 600 bucks and it has like a crack in it. You can't see it cause I'm not gonna turn it around but uh, this iMac has got me through years and I still use it. So I actually have attached to that a G-Tech it's a RAID drive. I use this for, I used it for the video editing in the past. And next to that, I have a few more storage drives. One holds a bunch of samples and below that are some archive drives. Next to that is actually a eGPU. It's basically an AMD 580. Next to that, you actually have my workstation PC, which to me is super powerful. It has a AMD 3700X processor and it has a Radeon 7 GPU. Next to that, I actually have my, I guess this is called my knickknack rack. So I have a bunch of the smaller synths that I use on a, uh, I guess on a regular basis when I just wanna pull it out. So in there I have, the, you know, the Moog Subharmonicon at the bottom. I have the Moog Workstat. I have my Empress Zoya. I have my Strymon Night Sky. And on top, I have my modal sculpt and my modal craft synth 2.0. All of these I just use so like, I wanna have like a cool rack where I can just pull it out and grab and go, you know? Now on the other side, I have my last synthesizer that I actually keep up regularly. Even though I don't use it as much, it's the Mo Grandmother and everyone knows what this is. So I keep it on the rack over here. I can just grab the power cord, which is right below at any time. And it's just super easy to, to jump into something different if I wanted to. All right, so obviously we have to talk about what's in the rack, but real quick, I wanna say everything in this rack except one thing was bought used or found for used, and I literally got it for like 50 bucks. So remember, this isn't stuff that you need, but for me personally, this is all stuff that has an exact use in my studio. So from top to bottom, Okay, so first up we have the Furman power conditioner. I've had this for like 10 years and it's always been rock solid, no problems. Below that we have the Steinberg MR816 CSX. I got this for super cheap, like uh, not 10 years ago, but maybe like eight years ago. It replaced like a PreSonus FirePod. I hook it up to the Audion ID1 for via ADAT. So I love it, it's never had any issues. Under that, I have the Golden Age project kind of line. Basically, it's a mic pre, it's a EQ and a compressor. It's kind of like a channel strip. I use basically this for a DI for guitar and bass, or I mean, maybe it, it actually runs right now through my Sub 37, but I don't use these as much as maybe a lot of people would think. Below that, I have the Valley People Dynamite. This is like a super old classic compressor. It's got a really dirty sound, but it also has probably the best coloration of any sort of compressor in my personal opinion. Uh, below that, obviously we have, this is like a box of just a bunch of like cords and other stuff that I don't use very much. On the ground, I actually have my Focusrite ISA-1. I absolutely love this preamp. I I always overlooked it because I thought the form factor was really lame, but in all reality, this is one of the most pleasing light coloration preamps that I've ever used. I love it. And below that, my favorite compressor really of all time in terms of like versatility is the LA-3A, and this is a golden age clone of an LA-3A. I'll either use this like 80% of the time or I'll use like the Waves plug-in version of the LA-3A. I just, I just love it. So for actual audio in my videos, I use the mic I'm using right now, which is the Audio-Technica A875R. It's a shotgun microphone, but it's really small and it actually makes a huge difference in terms of the actual sound quality of the videos. I used to use the Rode NT4 um, or NTG4, but it really gave me this thin sound. This mic gives me a much better uh, rounder sound that I can actually use without much work in post, so I love it. 
So along with my microphone to record audio, I just got this, but I love it. I use the Mix Pre 3 from Sound Devices. I actually have the 3M version. It's the musician's version. So that I can have metronome and a bunch of stuff that's very useful for musicians, but also it's great when I need to record dialogue lines or voiceover stuff. Preamps are so clean, I love it. Oh yeah, so on the video side, people always ask me which camera that I use to shoot the video. So I'm gonna tell you, but I don't want anybody to go out there and get it. So I use oh, the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K camera. It's usually locked with my Sigma 18 to 35 lens. I've had this camera for many years. And so a lot of people don't read, they don't actually know that I run a video production business outside of YouTube. So this is my workhorse camera. It's got some extra bells and whistles on it right now, but I love the image that this produces. And I've had it for so long that it's paid for itself so many times. I think that it's way, way overkill for YouTube specifically, but if you can find one super cheap, I think unlimited record time and all the stuff you get, it's actually really not a bad deal compared to a lot of the brand new cameras that are out today. So the second camera that I use, but not quite as much is the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera. And I really like this camera. Usually it's just sitting here with a lens and a monitor for some quick B-roll stuff if I need to use it. So this part is gonna be about like what's in my camera bag. So technically I'm gonna say in my camera bag, the, the lenses I use the most are obviously the Sigma 18 to 35 because it always sits on my Ursa and the Sigma 50 to 100, which usually sits on my Pocket 4K. As well, I would say the next lens that I use the most is the, the Canon 100 millimeter 2.8 lens. Uh, this is a macro lens. And I feel like if I had started with this, using this earlier on, I would have been so much happier with the visuals. This lens is just so sharp. I honestly can't take it off the camera. It's just so good. Uh, also, the Canon lens that I use the least is the Canon 70 to 200 2.8 IS. It's the first version of this lens. So I use this for certain super close up shots where I want the background to be really like uh, compressed, but I use this lens 0.1% of the time, but it still is a great lens. Now, aside from that, I actually use an Aperture 120T for the light about 98% of the time in all my videos. It's really great with this Light Dome Mini, super small and quick, and it honestly is super reliable, so that's why I keep it. So yeah, guys, that is everything in my music production setup from the video side to the music side. And always keep in mind that music production stuff or video production stuff is just tools and a way to get you from creative idea to a finished product. So. Remember to like and subscribe. Hey, if there's anything you have questions about that are in my setup, you can ask about it in the comments section below. Thank you again for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.